Hey guys, so today I'm going to be making a video all about tortoises, specifically if you've never owned a tortoise before, and what would be the best tortoise pet for you if you've never had one. This is all, of course, just my opinion based off my own experiences, but it all depends on where you live and other factors about your personal life if it's going to be a right fit for you. Tortoises are amazing animals and when you're capable of keeping them in captivity, they make wonderful pets. So we're gonna be talking about that today. You're gonna get to meet some of my tortoise pets and I hope you enjoy it and maybe learn something. So first, let's just talk about what is a tortoise. So we have turtles and tortoises. Are they the same thing? Are they not? Can you correct someone by yelling at them if they say turtle instead of tortoise? Well, the saying kind of goes that all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. So the group Chelonians are any reptile in the order Testudinates, and Testudinates includes tortoises, turtles, and terrapins. So although there are many species within this umbrella group, they can all be categorized together. So even if somebody says, hey, I love your turtle, and it's a tortoise, it's okay. But if they say, oh, I love your tortoise, and it's a red ear slider, a water turtle, that would be incorrect, which you could correct them politely, of course. These animals are extremely old. They go back to the times of dinosaurs, and they live a very, very long time. So again, depending on the factors of your own life, depending on the species and your location, that's what's going to determine if it's going to be the best pet, the best fit for you and your life. They live a really long time, and like all animals, you're supposed to be committed to taking care of them their whole life. So that's what we always aim for, and we like to encourage, and we always encourage getting your animals from a reputable captive breeder. We never want to promote wild collection of any reptiles or any animals for the pet trade unnecessarily. So we always like to promote, collaborate with, and spread the knowledge of reputable breeders because these are people where it's not only their livelihood for their families, but it's almost always a passion for them as well. And we like to be involved with conservation-oriented companies and just professionals in industry when it comes to creating life and creating these animals for purchase and for pets. Now there are many different species in the pet trade and they are all very specific, they have their specific needs, so it's always important to do a ton of research before you consider getting a tortoise that could live for over a hundred years. So I always want to encourage you to do that, take the time to do it. Back in the day you had to call people up at the zoo, you had to write letters, now we have the internet, we have unlimited resources that are available, so check into those reputable resources and do your research so you can do the absolute best by your tortoise pet. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about red foot tortoises, which is Chelonidus carbonaria. And these animals are considered to be New World species. So New World just means the Americas, North America, South America, whereas Old World would be your African and Asian species. So it's important to keep that in mind. When you keep reptiles, are you going to have just Old World species, New World species, or are they going to be mixed? You have to really think about this in terms of health because there are some pathogens that could be transferred that could be very threatening to either one of those species because they have a different immune system. So we're gonna be talking about the red fit tortoise today and how I really believe they make amazing tortoise pets, especially for somebody who's never owned one before and is starting to look into what they might want in terms of a reptile pet, specifically a tortoise pet. We do breed them. We do have a couple babies available right now, which I'm going to show you. One actually just went out today to its new home, so I only have one here that's a baby, but I have some other babies that are about a year old, so I'm going to show you all the different sizes and all about this species that is so, so great. So I live in Florida, which makes it a lot easier for me because of our climate here. Reptiles thrive. Florida is the number one state in the United States for invasive reptile species because no matter what reptile, they seem to thrive here. And there are exceptions, but this can be a great thing, especially for reptile keepers, but also a bad thing for the invasive species problem that we have in the state. So depending on where you live, you're going to have to think about the climate and how that's going to affect the species that you're interested in getting. Redfoot tortoises do extremely well in Florida. They do so well that even when they lay eggs in the ground, you can actually just leave them there to incubate naturally and 
they're most likely going to hatch. We do artificial incubation, so we either dig the eggs up or catch them by hand to place them in one of our incubators. Then after about four months, if those eggs are fertile, you're gonna see some really adorable, cute little tortoise babies. So let's talk about the redfoot tortoise and we will get into it. So the redfoot tortoise is a relatively small species of land tortoise. They are native to the South Americas, specifically the Brazilian regions, and they make really lovely pets. They are pretty respectful of their boundaries. I'm sure you've seen or maybe have heard of sulcata tortoises, which are so adorable and cute as babies, but they grow to be the third largest tortoise species in the world. Now, on top of this fact that they grow exponentially, they come from South Africa. So think about their predators that they're facing. I believe this is a huge part of their attitude and their demeanor towards captivity. They are wonderful animals and they make wonderful pets if they have an owner who's prepared to give them everything they need, but they are quite powerful and bulky and they try to bust out of whatever barriers that you have. They also are incredible diggers. They create huge trenches of six to 10 feet in the ground. So before getting a sulcata tortoise, do your research. It ends very sadly for many sulcata tortoises because people just get them as the cute little babies and as they grow, they start to realize, wow, I was not ready for this. This leads to a lot of homeless sulcata tortoises and that's really sad. Redfoot tortoises are more respectful of the boundaries, but you always have to secure the perimeter of wherever you're gonna be keeping a tortoise because reptiles in general are escape artists and they're very, very good at it. The redfoot tortoises stay pretty small to the point that you can pick them up as adults and move them really easily in and out of the house. We do bring them inside during the cold spells we have here, so usually they stay outside. We don't have to give them any heat unless it's the winter or we have to bring them in on the really chilly days here. So think about if you have a seasonal climate that has fall and winter, this species specifically is going to need hot boxes in the habitat outside, or you're gonna to have to create an indoor habitat with the proper heat for them. So I'm gonna show you what an adult redfoot tortoise looks like. This is a female, and this is pretty much how big they're gonna get, give or take just a little bit. So this is an adult egg-laying female redfoot tortoise. She is absolutely beautiful and amazing, and this is about what you're gonna see as an adult. The males do get larger. I do have a giant male. I don't know who he thinks he is growing this much and being so large for a redfoot tortoise, but he's also amazing. And these animals make really great pets for someone who's looking for a smaller species of tortoise, but also big enough that, you know, they're pretty noticeable and absolutely adorable. Say hi. So I'm just gonna overview some of the basics about owning a redfoot tortoise. Now, it's going to take a while for them to get this size, you know, at least over five years. So they can be kept inside for a pretty long time with the proper habitat and the proper husbandry items, but eventually they probably would enjoy being outside more. We're gonna talk about the type of lighting that I use, general habitat and husbandry of this species according to my experience and my own animals. So I'm just trying to bring my own experience to animal care, specifically reptile care, because we really have a passion for them and we'd love to share that. So I made this video because I get a lot of messages about tortoises and owning a tortoise for the first time, so that's what inspired me to do this video. Another really common question that I seem to get is, can tortoises feel their shells? Yes, they can absolutely feel their shells. and. Just a reminder that they don't need to come out of their shell because they are their shell. This is the only animal in the world that has this protective shell that's connected to their spinal cord. So this is connected to their spine. The outer part of the shell is called the carapace and the under portion is called the plastron. Female redfoot tortoises have a flat plastron whereas the male tortoises have a concave plastron, and that's to help them mate the females. So right underneath this beautiful shell, which is made of keratin, that is a protein that our hair and nails are made of, is bone. So think about if I pierced through your skin and touched your bone, you're gonna feel a lot. So they do feel everything when you're touching their shells. They like to get scratched. Some people set up little brushes in the habitat so they can go up to them themselves and scratch their butts and they wiggle and it's just adorable. 
So they can absolutely feel everything when you're touching their shells because remember, they are their shells. So another key point about this species and tortoises in general is that they're like solar powered lawnmowers. They eat a lot. <laughs> so since we're talking about diet, I just wanted to show you one of the tortoises' favoritest, favoritest treats. Let me tell you, okay, first of all, even people eat these. I haven't tried it, but I would because the tortoises make it look so delicious. It's so juicy and hydrating once they chomp into it, but be careful. These actually are not thorns. The, the spikes are microscopic, so they could be all over this. And just like some people, they may not look like a prick, but they are, they have a lot. <laughs> So this is an Apuntia cactus. You could probably get it at a Spanish grocery store or growing somewhere in Florida. We, these things, you can't kill this. You can literally break it off and throw it in the grass and it'll start growing. It's very, very good for reptiles like tortoises, lizards, anything like that because it's really high in vitamin A and vitamin K. If you had unlimited supply of this, we would probably feed it to our tortoises every single day. Is that good for them? We feed them white spoiled with leafy greens, fruits, vegetables every day. These eat every single day and this is the type of reptile that needs daily care as opposed to something like a snake. Tortoises, they can go a long time without eating and drinking just because of their biology but this is a survival mode and we don't want to put our animals in a situation where they're just surviving. We want them to be thriving in our care because captive animals rely on you 100% for their care. So we should try to do the best we can. And that's why it's so important to do your research, to get all the supplies you need, and to be really prepared, especially for an animal that could live 100 years and might be in your will. I really love tortoises because they have such a peaceful essence about them, but they're also very clumsy and clunky, and I feel kind of connected to that. So I really, really love tortoises just as an animal and that's why I really really enjoy keeping them. So as I'm thinking here I forgot one question that I frequently get is do they bite? Well you can see I've been holding this tortoise for quite a long time in this video and she hasn't tried to bite me. They never do out of aggression mostly just curiosity at my toes when I'm not paying attention. Now again, we only keep our redfoot tortoises in the same habitat. We don't mix any other species. All of the redfoots are together. All of the other types of tortoises are together. We do not like to cohabitate. And that's because of that pathogenic gut flora problem. So if they go to the bathroom and one species that's old world eats the poop of a species that's new world, they could potentially get very, very sick because they don't have any immunity to those pathogens or those bacteria that's natural to the other species. So we do recommend not cohabitating. We recommend keeping them apart, always. <laughs> now each tortoise species has species specific care when it comes to habitat, when it comes to diet, when it comes to health and everything in between. So just keep that in mind. There is not one rule for every species. Every species is very, very specific. And that's just the mindset I really like to emphasize when I'm talking to people about keeping reptiles and especially reptiles like tortoises, which are so lovely and special and they just, they deserve the best in the world, right? So I'm just gonna show you some of the general husbandry practices that we have keeping tortoises here. So what tortoises need as a basic is the proper substrate, which is like the bedding. We like to use cocoa bark or cypress bark, which you can get, I'm sorry, cypress mulch, which you can get from Home Depot. You can get giant bags of cypress mulch for about $3. And it's huge. If you have just one baby tortoise, it's going to last you months. I also like to use the cocoa husk because this holds humidity very well. Tortoises do need humidity. So if you live in a very arid environment, you're going to have to create artificial humidity. Luckily for us in Florida, which is why there are so many reptile keepers here, we just rely on nature for that because you can see we have no shortage of humidity. Aside from substrate, they do need to be fed every day. For the redfoot tortoise specifically, they do need to be fed every day, which is the case for all tortoise species, to my knowledge. 
And what you really want to do is provide a variety diet. So don't just feed them the same thing every day. You want to really mix it up as much as possible. They're going to really appreciate that and it's better for their health. So for the red foot tortoises specifically, the diets we like to feed them as a staple or we like to feed them that often is leafy greens like spring mix, like romaine lettuce, like green lettuce, red lettuce, butter lettuce, all the lettuces except for iceberg lettuce we don't like because it's pretty much 99% water and it makes their stool very watery and it's just, there's almost no health benefit to it. Also feed them vegetables but there is a huge list of vegetables you want to stay away from that are on tortoise forums you can search up. Nothing like broccoli or peas, there's, some, there's specific chemicals in some of the vegetables that can be very dangerous. So if you're considering feeding another type of vegetable, just do your research about that. When it comes to fruit, the red fruit tortoises are almost frugivores. They love fruit so much and they can tolerate a lot of fruit. This is a rainforest species from South America, so they are foraging on the ground all the time. They are omnivorous though, so they do enjoy an occasional protein in their diet, which could just be scraps. Could be chicken and everything in between. You can also use Missouri pellets which we use for a staple. We feed it often and that has high protein in it as well. But redfoot tortoises love fruit. One of their absolute favorite treats is papaya but we also like to feed them any other fruit almost. Everything except for the citrus fruits. So no lemon, no limes, no grapefruits and everything in that category is not so good for them. But most tortoises cannot tolerate high sugar like fruit, but the redfoot tortoises, they can. So they love fruit, we love giving it to them, and it's a great thing to add to their diet from time to time. Now along with the substrate and the diet of the redfoot tortoise, you also need tortoise hides. So most tortoises appreciate this and you're going to need it for almost every species out there. As we know, reptiles live a pretty elusive lifestyle and tortoises are included in that. I mean, they survived eons looking like a rock and blending in, which is another reason why if your perimeters are not secure, it can be very dangerous because they could escape or they could just be hiding in plain sight. It's just, you don't want those problems. They really, really need and appreciate those hides. It makes them feel safe, it makes them feel secure, and they really like to cuddle up with each other too sometimes in those. We also use these hides to create hot boxes. So we put a ceramic heat emitter on top of the hide. We either cut the top out or customize it in some way. So during the winter times or any cold fronts that come through, we can just lock them in that hide and make sure that they're okay. Remember, reptiles, they can't regulate their own body temperature. They rely on the environment. So it's really important for reptiles, especially if you're keeping them inside, to have a hot side, a cold side of your habitat so they can kind of balance themselves out the way they'd like to and the way they do in nature. So along with the substrate, the diet, the hide, some people ask me, well, can I keep just one tortoise or do I need to have a bunch? I think that they definitely appreciate having others of their kind. They are considered a social species, but I don't believe that they suffer alone. I think they can do just fine being by themselves, especially with the attention of a really caring owner like you. Now, if you're interested in breeding tortoises, it's a long-term investment. It's gonna take a long time for them to be ready to do that. Some species longer than others. Again, all of the details about animals are species specific. You have to do a lot of research and not just from one source, not just from one video, not just from one person, not from just one article. I always recommend the more the better. There's no hurt in that. Just outsource all of the resources that we have at our fingertips now and I'm sure you'll be able to come up with a plethora of information that will be helpful. So I'll show you a really basic hide that we have. We're in the process of moving so everything is a little bit scattered but our tortoises are doing just fine and again tortoises are survivors but we want to give them the best lifestyle possible especially when you're choosing to have the animal in captivity. You are choosing to get that animal and bring him into your life. We want to do the best that we can and this requires a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of dedication, and a lot of effort, especially with tortoises. Other reptiles like snakes, sometimes you can go on vacation for a few days and they'll be fine with just a water dish. But tortoises, we don't really recommend that. You want to keep an eye on them every day because they do face a terrible dilemma 
of flipping over. And if they flip over, they can die. So you could have a tortoise that's 100 years old, but you go away for a couple days and it flips over and it's in the sun and it's done. It's done. So maybe that's a part of the reason so many are endangered, but we still love their round, shelly selves. So here's a really simple hide that we have for our full-grown tortoises. This is really basic and simple, but you could build this out of pressure-treated wood from Home Depot with just a screwdriver, no, with a, with a drill, I guess, I don't know. Or you can just cut out plastic, which is what we did, and I'll show you that. So this is a very, very basic style of tortoise hide, and this is for our adult redfoot tortoises. These are just recycle boxes that we cut out a circle entrance thing for them to go in and out so we have a few of these in the redfoot tortoise habitat and they seem to appreciate it sometimes you'll see one in here sometimes two sometimes they're really cuddly there will be more than two <laughs> how's that tortoise hide loving my starborns reptile shirt these are my amazing friends down here in Florida, they have amazing reptiles, they're amazing people, they have an amazing facility, amazing husbandry and reptile care, and just shout out to you guys. Okay. <laughs> so those are the adult redfoot tortoises. They also need a water dish, especially in places like Florida where it's ridiculously hot. So keep a water dish out. We like to use those plant saucers, which are really easy to just dump out and refill every day. So again, your reptiles need water, especially in Florida, because dehydration is the cause of death for many reptiles out there. So just keep that in mind. It seems like a basic, but sometimes people forget. We do not keep water dishes in the baby habitats. So we don't do this for the small babies because they could go in the water dish, flip over, drown. We just choose to soak them instead so we'll soak them in a, in a little dish for 20 to 30 minutes a day let them get their hydration and then we just take it out of the habitat completely so once they're about a year old you can put a water dish in there but before that don't do it so here is the example of our habitat for the babies this is just pressure treated wood with some other stuff I'm not the best with all of that I didn't build it myself I had help but we just have a table from Walmart and it's actually screwed into the table so it doesn't move and then it just opens up. So you're gonna, if you're better at this than me, I got all these parts from Home Depot. Home Depot has like a cutting station. They cut the dimensions for me. I wish I could provide a better explanation than I am, but this just isn't my thing. I'm still learning a lot about building habitats myself. So I hope along the way it, it starts to get better and better. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. So for the substrate, we have cypress mulch, which again, you can get very cheap from Home Depot. We have a couple hides, our water dish, and then this is where we place the food. So they are quite messy. This species is, again, omnivorous. So they'll, they will even eat each other's poops. They like to do that for some reason. And we actually had one that hatched out just very, very weak. He wasn't doing well and he passed away and his brothers and sisters ate him when we looked in here. So that was pretty traumatizing, but it's definitely possible that if like a bird falls into your tortoise habitat or another animal that dies, your redfoot tortoises will most likely eat it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. They, they like that protein sometimes. So these are about one year old. And this is actually a cherry head redfoot tortoise. So you can see that their heads are red. And the cherry head redfoot tortoise is a specific locality of the redfoot tortoises. So it's the same species, but it's a, it's a different color locality limited to a specific region in Brazil, I believe. So this size, we do put the water dish in, especially because it gets really, really hot. Here's some of their food left from today. It's a little bit messy. We keep this type of thing in our tortoise habitats because we don't want the food to be stuck with dirt or anything else that could cause them to get impacted. Impaction is just when their stomach gets blocked and this can actually kill your reptiles. So we try to avoid that at all costs. 
And with something simple like this, just a little cut piece of plastic or whatever you have can do really well for that. Something like this you can have indoors as long as you have the proper lighting attached to it, but it really is a perfect setup for baby, redfoots, or any tortoise species as long as you have the right lighting and all the species specific care based on that animal. So again, we are in the process of moving, so everything's kind of scattered, but we have this tarp in the yard, and for some reason these tortoises love hiding in the tarp. So I feel so good. Okay, what do we have in here? They do not have a problem, it seems to be getting out, like they never get trapped in here. Look at all of them! <laughs> okay, so here we have... That's Luigi, our biggest male. This is our other male, and then the rest we have are females. So I wanna show you the stomach of the males. So this is actually one of our two males, and he's quite small, although we believe he's quite old. And you saw that the plastron of the female is very flat. The plastron of the males are very concave, and that's to help them mount the female when they're trying to mate. So we believe this animal's quite old. We don't know exactly because we adopted him as an adult like this, he has grown quite a lot, but he was found in a state park, I believe. He was found in some random park with a pile of dog food next to him. So who knows how long he was out there struggling or living his best life, I don't know. But this is typically a small adult redfoot tortoise, especially for a male. And their sizes can vary a little bit, just depending on the individual animal. You have certain characteristics about animals as a species, but you have very specific characteristics about them as an individual as well. So even though it's just a turtle, just a tortoise, they are really individual in their own ways. Just like each dog is individual, each tiger is individual, each animal is really individual, just like people. This is Jack O, and he's quite small for a full-grown redfoot tortoise, but we don't really know his whole story. But he's absolutely gorgeous. We're so thankful to have him. We love him so much. Now I'm going to show you our ridiculously large, abnormally large redfoot tortoise, Luigi. Are you guys ready for this giant tortoise? This is Luigi. He's huge. You can see he has that really concave plastron for the ladies. He's really big. He's a really big tortoise. That's probably as big as you're ever going to see them. <laughs> and I just want to say, you know, some people might ask, well, you keep the babies inside, why don't you just keep the adults inside too, you know? Just let them roam around your house. Well, these things are pretty messy, they're pretty stinky, um, and they go to the bathroom in the house, which is not nice. So they definitely will use the bathroom on your floor with no remorse. Some people put cute little diapers on them and let them go through the house, which if you're about that, go for it, why not? So I showed you guys one-year-old redfoot tortoises, full-grown redfoot tortoises, and I'm gonna show you a brand new hatchling that just came from the incubator this past week. He started eating, so cute. And um, we keep these inside, so I'm gonna show you some of the indoor stuff. So this is a brand new baby redfoot tortoise. This is the second season that we've produced babies where our females have laid, we incubate the eggs, and then they hatch. So because of the pandemic right now, all of the stuff we ordered is taking a really, really long time. So we kind of had to make do with what we had at the moment. So this is actually the bottom of a kitty litter box. And this is a snake hide that we have. And then we don't have any substrate right now, so I just use paper towels and paper for them to hide in. There was two, but one went out to his new home today. And this is a brand new baby redfoot tortoise that was born last week, hatched last week. So you can see, this is where his little umbilical cord belly button was, slash is. This is the point that they're attached to the egg. This is where they're attached to the egg and they're growing. So when they first hatch, all right, buddy, I'm sorry. When they first hatch, it's like a big blob, like a big blob belly button. 
and over a course of about a week, it absorbs into their bodies, and that's what's giving them the nutrients, and so that's why they don't eat for the first week, because they're absorbing this blob. Once this thing is completely absorbed like this, they start eating. So he's been eating for the last couple days, doing really, really well, absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. They enjoyed some of the cactus today. Now he's all alone. I'll put him back. Since I don't have all my products, I've been taking them outside every day to get some sun. But once I have all my lighting and stuff come in, we will set them up inside like some of the other ones we have. And I will show you what those look like. So here is a very basic version of a tortoise hatchling habitat that we keep indoors. The bottom portion is actually the bottom portion of a rabbit cage. Inside you have that cypress mulch, a hide, a little paper plate for the food, and a water dish. Right here we have a light stand which is attached to the light fixture. There should be like a metal hanging piece attached to this, but we don't have that right now. And then we have the light bulb, which is a solar glow all-in-one UVB reptile bulb. Here are those gorgeous red foot tortoises. These are maybe just under a year old, and they're actually the cherry head red foot tortoises as well. This one has a funny looking shell, very beautiful gorgeous red head these animals are really great and with the proper care they do so well in captivity and that's why I really recommend them as a great starter tortoise pet but again keep in mind that these things last for decades and that's great Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you have a newfound love for red foot tortoise species if you haven't before. And I hope that if you're considering getting a tortoise species or any reptile that you do the proper research to get the proper products and learn everything about them that you can to give them the ultimate, most enriching life possible. We absolutely adore red foot tortoises. They're a very special piece of our life. So I hope that showing you a little bit of mine brought you some knowledge or just a perspective of my own experience with them because they are such amazing animals and I hope I did well by representing them. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. See ya!